Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 15 of Rockhold, the Gift of Shadow. So, today is a great day. We are founding an entirely new quarter for the many people that come to live here. We are also excavating an entirely new quarter, and down here, the furniture department is added again, and they are providing all the goodies that these people need. 12 new bedrooms down here at the hospital. I think we're doing a great job so far. But here we see the expansions are on their way and we cannot stop here. We're just beginning. So Nish gave a name to his bronze shield. Good on you. So main things today on my mind are more of the castle. Because this is going to be really one of the biggest things that we have up ahead of us. So, I figured that we really need to start, obviously, with the question, where will be the main entrance? But I think the main entrance will be on this southern tongue of the whole thing. So, yeah, here begins a really, really... Uh, long and painful process where we start killing off trees wherever we can and I think we're starting now or warfare with nature properly. <laughs> so I really gotta think also what we're uh, or I gotta think about what we're going to do with all that timber. You see it is a resource that we surely want to spend somehow. I don't know how yet, though. And if we have a uh, look at this area, you see all the green dots on the map over here are trees. So this place is teeming with trees. That means also we're going to have a lot of timber to process. And I, I don't even have a steel industry that could eat it up for me. So that's one thing that I really don't know yet how we're going to handle it, but I am very heavily biased towards floors. That's one thing that really strikes my mind, or, well, probably crafts, and try to sell them to the elves and piss them off. Well, I don't know. So, an elf bard is visiting us. She'll certainly like the, the view of things here when she comes on in here. Twickety twack, twickety twack. So here's the problem. There's now open space, and whoa! People are falling down stairs because entire parts of the floor collapsed. Wow. So let's see. Ubul luckily didn't really suffer any injuries. And the dog was just fighting with Ikea. So, well, that does show me we should probably kill the trees first. Because seriously, that was one very, very scary incident. That's why dwarves hate trees, obviously. They're always full of nasty surprises. Anyways, let's put fresh floor boards on top of this whole mess and forget that it ever happened. There we go. So, yeah. Trees. Fun guys. Alright. But the thing here is I'm now taking the, uh, the full risk of uh, pissing off the uh, biome here simply because we, we have such powerful defenses now going on for ourselves that, well, I'm growing confident. Maybe overconfident, but we'll see about that. We have a drowning operation ready. I really hope it does work. Should we give it a test drive? Well, not today. I've been fiddling around so long with that thing, I, I need a break from this machine. But, uh, it didn't really... Uh, Give me the impression that I need to do a test drive immediately. So let's check back with our bone doctor, Foth. Dr. Foth has a pretty good feeling about things. He's our legendary cook. And let's see how his latest memories were. He produced a masterwork, 
He also communed with Erdim. I wonder whether or not we are here uh, like a uh, spiritual center or something like that. And his bedroom is good. People are talking a lot about waxwork in here, obviously. The dining room is fantastic, and his spouse is making him happy. He also is happy about the uh, guild that we founded. Wonderful. And, well, he's practically yearly communing with Erdem, since he's here, at least. So, gives me the impression that things are pretty good for him. So, Fath, it's pretty nice to see that you're all well and running. I really appreciate having you around. So, let's check with our Carpenter's Workshop. Obviously, of course, beds do require trees sure sure but is there anything else that we can make that would be a very interesting thing to mass produce well at the carpenter's workshop nothing really strikes my my fancy i mean bookcases huh how about that i like the idea let's make wooden bookcases i i really do like the idea of that for a change, not metal, not rock. We're making bookcases out of wood this time. Oh, sweet. Uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty neat deal. Alrighty. So, another baby has been born. Two babies, actually. Cool. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Okay, so the the shortage of drinks is uh, being resolved by the by the uh, day, and oh, I I do remember one thing though. Oh, can we can we still link this up, or is this uh, now a lost cause? Ugh. Well, we'll uh, we'll try. I wonder if I now forgot this thing for a too long time. <laughs> so last episode we had a. Uh, really really low amount of drink available and uh well at least that is now no longer an issue so can you guys still or is it not possible anymore? i mean ice bucket challenge anyone who dares to open the hatch <laughs> it's not lethal all right I'm glad to see that my drink stockpiles are uh, are going up again. So let's see how that job goes out. I really want to fill this place here with uh, farms as well. Okay, so there is a piece of open space. Another baby, baby boom this year. It's a uh, it's a baby winter. Jeez, three three births in in one season. That is. Uh, Surely something. So yeah, as you see here, they paused. They suspended the task. That is because it is now unfulfillable. Silly old me. So the only thing that we can do now is we can expand that uh, place. Mm -hmm. So we need to work fast on that one though. So the basic idea is simple. We're providing more room in here. And this way, we can access the hatch again because the water will now spread over a large area. So nobody can, uh, is in too deep waters. And we're also casually flooding the place, obviously. But well. So. That's irrigation with extra steps. So, next step, you pull the lever and you put walls here. You... Ah, oh, well, let's... Uh... Let's hope they don't lock themselves in with doing that. Uh, well, it might be. 
That's an odd way of killing somebody off, I'd say, but no, it's not happening. All right, and now we just pull the lever once more. And now, well, the whole thing restarts. I mean, most of the room is already muddied up. We could use it as a farm already, but uh, the main idea here is that I want to have a place where I'm growing all year round, just uh, drink things so we don't run into such shortages anymore because that was uh, making me a tad bit nervous to see that my drink stockpiles were almost zero. That's uh, way too close to, to feel good. All right, so, well, wooden bookcases. I feel like making uh, a nice library here as well soon. All right, so let's see. We uh, we obviously need to floor up this place entirely when we're done here. Yep, I'm pretty sure nature will be super pissed. 100%. It's a very, very obvious thing going on here. But, well, we're dwarves. We're pissing off nature. That's uh, pretty much... Uh, part of the job description. So, something has collapsed on the surface. Let's not worry about that. As long as nobody is being wounded. Oh, wait a sec. So... He... He lost his lower lip. Oof. You know, things that... The, the, the things that fall down are really, really dangerous. All right, just a bruise. All right. Nobody got injured uh, severely. You see, that's what these dawn trees do to you. We're going to transform them into something better. Don't you worry. Okay, so a new artifact is in the making. Zulban, the weaponsmith, is working on something new. All right. There we go. I wonder if these ponds are, are large enough eventually to host animals. So we claimed a magma forge down here. Luckily we got ourselves some metal to work with from the latest uh, incursion of goblins and also from the latest trades with our allies. So there is plenty of things to work with. Okay, so let's go into the Sand City one more time and start building some walls. So there we go. This is going to be one really big step forward for us. I love the fact that we got now the majority of the city done. I still have to expand some more, obviously, but we're we're taking good uh, we're making good progress. It was a very very wild ride to get there in the first place to to get myself a design and an idea where we're going to build the city. When I saw the um, amount of shenanigans that were involved with the um, that's a false positive, friends. Um, with all the aquifers and close vicinity to the to the caverns, I was really a little bit nervous in the first place. But uh, well, things are working out just fine now. So they get a false positive here because there's water above, but uh, that doesn't matter because it's no aquifer. It's uh, it's just my pond. I make this water. <laughs> so. But I mean, I don't mind that these warnings are in place and all. Because at the end of the day, it's better that way around than the other way around. I mean, I know mostly what I'm doing. But for people that are entirely new to the game, this would be absolutely nightmarish if you'd be 
digging into aquifers without any warning or whatever. If the game would just toss you into there and uh, be like, yeah, it's your problem now. Get over it. What is he gathering down there? I mean, Zulban has already picked up steel, gemstone, stone, alpaca wool cloth, stray goat kit bone, and timber. It's quite the variety of materials. Alright. But as we can clearly see here, our, our siltstone expansion is going really, really well. That's a good sign. So let's head back to our to our expeditionary quarter and see how things are evolving here. So first off, the supplies of siltstone seem to be absolutely, absolutely available and all. The other thing on my mind is I was wondering where do we worry or siltstone once it is needed. Currently, that is obviously not a thing that we need to spend a single thought about, but uh, it won't be that easy always. All right, he is now doing a mysterious construction. What did he pick up after the logs? More bones and a schist block. Okay, interesting choices. So, that means the main entrance of the castle will be somewhere around here. I probably will use this entire hill here and uh, fill the gaps here just with floor. I think that's one of the first things that we should do and, uh, you know, level the whole field so that we can work with it properly because, honestly, it's always one of the biggest problems for me to get uh, to get control over the area and uh, understand the topography good enough to, to make to make something happen here it's currently still not that easy there's so darned many trees here it's one of the big issues here those many many trees so I want to see how my stone workers are going. So, chert blocks, siltstone blocks. We do seem to have a nice production line of siltstone blocks. And is that a steel warhammer being claimed as a family heirloom? All right. So, all right. If you say so. The good thing is, it is in Etour's family, who is after all a main cast member so let's uh, check out a tour so are you the one a tour council pages wait a sec so yes Zulban created this. So, how are you related to Zulban? Tell me. It's his wife. So, I see. The wife of the chief doctor created that one. So, Zulban, you just uh, elevated yourself. It happens. That, that's exactly the kind of things that I uh, live for. She's a legendary weaponsmith now. So, I think it is totally okay that you claimed the first one for herself. So, Elvin Caravan, yuck. She's shameless, absolutely unfazed by the thoughts of others. Yeah, that's that's exactly the kind of person who would forge a steel warhammer in a fort that has no metal whatsoever, and then claim it for your own family. Yep, she lives up to that characteristic. She's not the type to fall in love or even develop positive feelings. You are married, though. She dislikes receiving advice, preferring to keep her own counsel. All right, I'm shutting up. She doesn't tend to hold on to grievances, and she's somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger. She tends to not to be swayed by emotional appeals, and she has a greedy streak. She occasionally overindulges, and she can sometimes act without deliberation. She can handle stress, and she chews her lips when she's angry, and she becomes very rigid when she's angry. So, okay, that's a lot of things. Do you become often angry, Zulban? She likes magnetite, nickel, silver, red beryl, 
leggings, quivers, rings, mules, and the words of the dead ash, the sound of the phrases of the aquamarine and the sight of the poet of glistening. When possible, she prefers to consume bull shark and mead. She absolutely detests fire snakes. Fire snakes. Yeah, those those guys suck. Alright, so meet Zulban. Wonderful. So the whole city is uh, growing. That's the big deal here. I'm, I'm very happy to see how well these things go, move forward now. Seriously. So, can make this happen. No problem. Alright. The problem that I see emerging is that the fort is not keeping up with the speed in which we consume rock blocks. This uh, this fort is eating rock blocks rock blocks in a in a really really shocking uh, speed. But well, that's what it is if you have to construct the entire city manually. I guess that's uh, really a big part of the issue here, because I never build an entire city in this lair. In all honesty, usually I avoid that wherever I can, due to the obvious reasons that we see here. The painstaking amount of resource involved is just the main reason why I usually try to avoid building cities like that. But Rockhold is a special case, and there's nothing more fun than challenges like these. All right. So let's head back upstairs. As you can see here, we're everywhere under supplied rock block wise. So what's happening down here? Parts of these workshops don't even get claimed. All right. Parts of these workshops are producing blocks. So let's check out the jobs here. We see slate blocks are only marked for three processes at the same time. That means it can only claim three workshops at the same time. Schist and siltstone blocks, all the other blocks don't have this uh, weakness. All right, good. So probably there will be more business down here, probably. We also now see all these nice bookcases emerging. So I wanna do some, some fancy stuff. So loop-de-doo. Let's do some decorational work. Those bookcases, they're supposed to be not only bookcases. I want to make them really, really something special. So, oh, I need to check out these. So, j -j gem cutter. So, Zazit will receive this workshop and we're going to encrust furniture with cut gems there we go and you do that as long as we have more than 10 cut gems that's very important and as long as there's something to decorate the really important part here with that workshop is that we clearly need to define from which stockpiles she should take oh wait a sec not the armor stockpile er, here because otherwise she'll be starting to decorate entire, the entire stockpile up here and that would be fatal. So let's see, that should work, it always does. In the meantime, the castle moves forward. That's good, it's really, really good. So let's uh, take down the trees here because I really want to get the it going here as fast as we can. The annoying part is that we are going to have to stitch the holes in the floor as fast as we can because otherwise invaders will have an easy entry point into our pasture. Been there done that. It really sucks when that happens. There we go. So, I'm already, already wondering what kind of wild animals will invade us this time. I've seen so many things during my expeditions in Savage Biomes. It's, it's seriously one of the most fun parts about this whole deal, in my humble opinion. Alright. 
So we're going to put these on top priority here because that's what they are. We really don't want anybody skulking into our pastures. Wonderful. So I think we chopped successfully more than enough trees to piss off the entire biome here. So let's see, schist seems to run dry now. Oh, I have clay stone, sure. So, well. Let's dig inside here as well. I mean, these quarries, they have the innate advantage that we are gather gathering new gemstone with these. Which is really, really important because gemstone is just, well, best material to upgrade the value of things, obviously. So, that gives our miners some jolly good work to do. I deeply think that they are appreciating the works here. Okay, so, claystone. I could really, really gather up a lot of that as well. I just realized how little effort I took so far to, uh, to excavate that stuff. Really hope that we're not going to accidentally cave into the uh, caverns here. That would be really, really not good. Here we go. You see, there's already gemstone popping up. Exactly what I was hoping for. So I do already notice that slate is also going to be a little bit of a short chair. Good. So we see these are filled. Most important floorboards after all. And yeah, we struck again more gemstone. Beautiful. These are really, really valuable little buggers, so I'm quite happy to find them. It's exactly what I was hoping to see. Okay. So, we can now finally, finally, finally pull the lever and uh, flood the place. Get massive payout. Swoosh. There we go. And now let's do it again. Alright, after the evaporation has set in, we're going to make sure that we get more plump helmets on the fields. So, I kind of wonder, where are all my plump helmets going? Do we have them somehow on the, on the cooking scheme or anything like that? No, they're just being brewed. Plump helmet spawn 185. Why on earth are they not being sewn out? Is my... Oh, oh, I... That's the whole deal. Asmo. He's walking around and doing wrong things. The old fool. That's what's happening. Uh, I usually do this uh, directly, that my planters have no other business than planting, you see. That's why we do it. Wow! Yellow zircon as well? Sheesh! What a, uh, what a profitable exploration! See, I, I, I don't see where the yellow zircon is at, but... Uh, here. They just haven't cut, uh, dug it out yet. There's... Ah, now I see the yellow sprinkles. So, wow, we went out to dig out some schist and we found massive amounts of gemstone here. <laughs> That's making me happy. I'm also very, very happy to see that this city is uh, now consolidating itself. I, I finally found the faulty um, spot on my agriculture really bothered me a bit because, uh, well, obvious reasons, right? So, there's something we can carve out here. And that's a nice amount of uh, boulders to work with again. Yeah, yellow zircon, 120 dwarf bucks. Nice. Do we actually cut gemstone on a regular basis? Is this uh, already implemented, or...? It's not. I thought so. 
All right. Cut gems. Leave ten rough gems. Go forth. And cut gems. Obviously, we can't decorate anything with gems if we don't uh, cut any gems. It's a pretty clear statement, I think. So let's see what happens down here. So the merchants will leave soon. Again, the elves knocked on our doors and again we ignored them. Well, the only elves that have been able to talk with dwarves in here in the fort were those that uh, went into the taverns. I mean, it is clear that's the only time when you can't, uh, when you can be sure that the dwarves will be in a talkative mood. Yeah, but well, I don't mind. We're still not going to trade with them until we have finished those excellent uh, bookcases. Pretty sure. Just freak them out. But we're not doing this on purpose. This place is on a very, very important diplomatic mission and we're not going to uh, fraudulently uh, go into war with the elves for no reason, because that would be boring. I don't like cliches. If we do want to have some some animosities with these dudes, there has to be a good reason for that. That all being said, it is sadly time to find an end for today. Well, my friends, I had a blast. It's uh, we're we're making excellent progress here on the surface. We're killing many many trees. We're building the fort, and well. It's a bit sad that I still haven't gotten to the point where we are uh, even uh, setting up walls. But, uh, well, as you see there, we have so much business to do with just getting the trees under control that, uh, well, building a castle in the middle of a uh, forest is not a uh, little thing. So stay tuned. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very pleased. And of course, check out the description box. There's plenty of links to go around. There's Discord, there's Twitch. There's several other Dwarf Fortress uh, seasons of Let's Plays that you can watch. And yeah, I'd be really happy if you'd gave them a go. And if you think my work is worth a few pennies to you, check out Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee. There's also my channel membership system, which allows you to preview all the pre-uploaded things that I do. And I'd be really, really delighted if you just gave them a look. And I want to say a big thanks to everybody supporting the channel. I really deeply appreciate you folks. And of course, I want to say a big thanks to you watching this video right here, right now. I really am happy that you are spending your time on my Dwarf Fortress videos. And I hope you had a good time again on this one. Until we meet again, see you there, bye bye.